stadium. Of course, we're using the familiar violet hues in the stadium to help you remember that diphtheriae is gram positive. The second thing you should know is that diphtheriae is often described as having a club shape in a Y or V formation. It is also described as containing metachromatic granules that stain with aniline dyes. To help you remember this, we'll draw a guy here playing maracas. We've made them blue and red to help you remember the metachromatic granules. The aniline dye stains the granules red and the rest of the cell blue. The V or Y formation can be remembered with zigzag lines on the maracas. Hopefully in 20 years, when you're the ones writing board style questions, you'll start using the term maraca-shaped rods. That would be awesome. Changing a buzzword would be one of the most amazing legacies we could ever hope for. Before we go into the symptoms of cryobacterium infection, let's talk about the exotoxin that causes them. And of course, it's important for you to know how the toxin functions. This toxin has two subunits, A and B. A is the active subunit, and B is the binding subunit. The exotoxin causes ADP ribosylation of elongation factor 2. This inhibits ribosome function and leads to inhibition of protein synthesis. We'll remember all of this by drawing a man playing the accordion here in the stadium. We want this accordion, which can elongate, to remind you of elongation factor 2. We've also given him a nice big bow tie to remember ribosylation, and it's placed right above the accordion. So ribosylation of elongation factor 2 inhibits protein synthesis. This inhibition of EF2 and protein synthesis leads to cell death. This often leads to the formation of pseudomembranes, or a thick grayish exudate over the mucosal surface of the oropharynx. And this is very similar to the pseudomembranes formed by C. diff in the colon. We'll help you remember this by drawing kids in the stand eating gray cotton candy. And we'll have the cotton candy wrapped in a plastic wrap. This grayish cotton candy with plastic wrap will remind you of the pseudomembrane formation. These pseudomembranes are found in the throat and tonsils because the infection is transmitted by respiratory droplets, and the organism then colonizes the oropharynx. The membranes can spread to the larynx and trachea and cause airway obstruction. It can also cause lymphadenopathy that may be so severe and so striking that it can lead to a characteristic thickening of the neck, and this is known as bull's neck. Let's draw our bull here, and he's extending his head backwards to display his massive bull neck. We'll also draw some droplets coming out of his mouth as he charges to remind you that it's transmitted by respiratory droplets. If this toxin gets into the bloodstream, it can have systemic effects, both on the heart and nervous system. Diphtheria infection can lead to life-threatening myocarditis. This can present with arrhythmias and heart block. To remember these cardiotoxic effects of diphtheria, we're going to use our matador, and we're going to give him a cape in the shape of a heart. It's these cardiotoxic effects that also helped inspire the title of the drawing as well. The corazón, or heart, de la corrida, of the bullfight. Since this is the potentially lethal effect of diphtheria, it's important, and it's why it's the center stage of our entire drawing. Additional presenting symptoms include local paralysis that generally begin in the posterior pharynx and can lead to other cranial nerve deficits. This is caused by the diphtheria toxin damaging the myelin of nerve fibers. To help you remember this, we're going to have a man in the crowd eating sausages. These sausages are supposed to look like a myelinated axon of a nerve, and since he's shoving them down his throat, this will remind you that the nerve deficits start in the posterior or pharynx. Now we'll move on to the lab diagnosis of diphtheria. A good clinical history and physical exam can give you a pretty good idea that it's diphtheria. However, a definitive diagnosis requires either culturing or a toxin assay. So you swab those grayish membranes and then plate them, and you'll plate them on two special auger that you'll need to at least be able to recognize. These are Tellurite and Loeffler's media. To remember the Tellurite media, we'll draw a large screen like in any sports arena, and we'll write Telly on it to reinforce the word Tellurite. To help you remember Loeffler's medium, we'll draw a kid who is laughing as he's watching the show. Laugh or laughter should remind you of Loeffler's. So Telly for Telluride and Laugher for Loeffler's. You may need to look at this drawing once again or a few times more to make sure you really remember these. They're not the most high yield aspect of the drawing, but it could definitely help. So these two mediums were for culturing the bacteria. To differentiate between toxic and non-toxic strains of diphtheria, we need to use another test. It's called ELEX test. An ELEX test is an in vitro assay on filter paper that has antitoxin on it. If toxin binds to it, there's a reaction and the strain is considered toxic. To help you remember ELEX test, 
we are going to make the bull's tongue sticking out and licking the matador. This licking, or lick, will remind you of e-licks. In question stems, the patients who get diphtheria are often immigrants, and this is because examiners are trying to clue you in on the fact that these kids may not have been vaccinated. In developed countries, children are routinely vaccinated for diphtheria, and so we need to know this vaccine. It's a toxoid vaccine, which means it consists of inactivated exotoxin bound to protein. It's often given with tetanus toxoid and acellular pertussis vaccine, and this toxoid vaccine can produce a very powerful IgG response. To help you remember this vaccine, we'll draw syringes, our vaccine symbol, sticking into the side of the bowl. This imagery should be easy to remember because the syringes look like the short spears or barbs used in actual bullfighting. We've made them the color green, like the bow tie, because the bow tie represents the toxin, so the green vaccine should represent a toxoid vaccine. So if somebody presents with symptoms because they weren't vaccinated, the only real treatment we have is passive immunization or administering antitoxoid. Since this is fairly easy to remember, we didn't include a memory hook specifically for it, but I thought it would be worth mentioning. And that's all we have for diphtheria.